like to call the Board of Trustees meeting at 1 p.m. Uh, only announcement I have is to wish everybody Happy New Year. And one way or another, we all survive the holidays. And it's good to see everybody. Uh, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to announce? Okay. Uh, public comment. I don't see any members of the public here. Um, all right. So we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from November 15th. Uh, you've had a chance to look them over. <clears throat> Are there any questions, comments, additions, or subtractions? Could I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? Okay. okay. Margaret, is there a second? Yeah. Seconded by Jordan. All in favor? Okay. And we put these on, uh, on file in the, in the archives. Uh, moving on, um, Bob, could we have the uh, treasurer's report? Yeah. Uh, we have two months, obviously, since we didn't meet in December. So we'll start off with November. Um, we started off the month with two million five hundred and seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars. We had receipts of one hundred and forty-two thousand six hundred. Uh, the only thing that was not a normal every month, we did have some grant and aid for fifty thousand dollars that came in uh, in that one hundred and forty-two, and we spent three hundred and forty-nine thousand two hundred and nine thousand and we ended up with two million three hundred and seventy one thousand six hundred and eighty three and then for the month of december we obviously started off the month with the month that we ended the november if we didn't then we had to <laughs> with colleen <laughs> two million three hundred and seventy one thousand six hundred and eighty two and we had 97,236 that came in on uh, various receipts, and we spent 254,919 and um, ended up with $2,214,280. And one thing of note is you'll notice that um, the shortest term CD that we took out 90 days ago, two hours and two days. And it was 1.65%. And we are getting $2,034.24 in interest. And when we renew it, it's going to renew at 4.3%. So that's a big, big increase. And we'll keep rolling them over until we get to the point where we're running low on cash. And then we may have to, you know, cash a few in order to augment our, our cash balances. And that's about it. Unless somebody has questions or comments. Questions? Okay. Oh, and the other thing is, is that the audit is ongoing. You know, the in house Thursday and Friday. And afterwards, Ellen will calm down. <laughs> and Friday is the Friday of the review with Sarah. Sarah is on board with that. No, she hasn't told me what time, and I need to tell her if you guys want to do it virtually or in person. So, Sarah and Bob, I just need to know if you want to. I'm going to be here physically. No, I'll be here. So we have it. So we'll finish that time. And we'll find out time. Okay. Uh, warrants? Warrants are in your packets or were in the packets. Yeah. For your perusal. So we get you to file those reports. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Moving on, uh, Sarah, director's report. Um, we need to approve we need that. We need a motion. Oh, all right. Can I have a motion to file the reports? To file the reports, yes. Uh, Janet, seconded by <laughs> Barbara. Yes, <laughs> thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, I'm going to be okay. the start of my report, and Michelle will be reporting on a few things of interest um, mm -hmm. after my oral report. Um, first is there are cookies over there and they're really good. So <laughs> feel free to please eat cookies. Can I bring them over here? Yes. Can I say that enthusiastically? <laughs> there's you know, there's certain priorities. And cookies are definitely a priority. Um <laughs> what Bob did mention in his report is that I believe we're still missing approximately twenty thousand dollars in state aid. <laughs> um 
So it's the 10 percent uh, of the L L L S A S. And according to Colleen, it's been approved by one department, but the budget and finance department seems to be dragging their feet writing the checks. So we'll have just a little bit more uh, coming in anytime soon. Yeah. Um, advocacy, advocacy Day is scheduled for February 28th, and Pamela is scheduling virtual visits with our 10 legislators. They might not all happen on the 28th. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, the, I've had really bad, not that this is about me, but I've had really bad travel karma. And um, I'm not, and I am anticipating to be back in Albany on the 27th, but travel happens. Um, so I may or may not be able to participate virtually on the 28th. Um, but we're working on in house coming up with a story. And uh, I would recommend that trustees, when we're visiting your either senator or assembly member, to please join us virtually in the visit. We'll keep you up on that and also our talking points. Right. I'll try to get the day as usual. So just include me on the, the story. Okay. Oh, is this going around too? It is going around. Everything's going around. Yeah. Um, the good news is that Harry Warner, who's literally around the corner, is the chair of the library committee. So we, she understands libraries, so it's always nice to have uh, legislators who truly love libraries, understand libraries, and use libraries. Um, the, our other assembly, due to gerrymandering, we have some new and some um, not so new. Um, trustees. So John McDonald uh, is only Waterford, uh, but I know he's a friend of the library. Mary Beth Walsh is also a friend of our libraries. Uh, Matt Simpson is a friend of Sal's and libraries. Robert Smolin appreciates libraries. And we have one person who's representing Washington County, and he's new to us, is Scott Bendit. <laughs> He lives in Rensselaer County, and his it's a long uh, district up and through Washington County. Have you met him? No, I just know that Washington County was ripped apart and stuck back together in very unpleasant ways when it came to the gerrymandering. So, so that Senate, um, uh, Jim Tedesco, who's been a friend of libraries, sits on the Senate Library Committee. Um, somebody I think kind of new to us is Jacob Ashby, also Washington <laughs> County. A man named Mark Wall. I can't pronounce it, but it looks Dutch to me. He's an art teacher at Atlanta Community College. Jacob Ashby? No, Mark Wall. Um, it's W A L C D Y K. Um, um, he's in Hamilton County. This had been Jim Tedesco's district and Hugh Farley's district, but it got cut up a little bit. So now he has a huge, huge, huge. It goes um, from Hamilton County all the way up to Watertown and over. Um, so he's new to us. Um, we are asking for New York State Library operating aid to be $147.1 million and construction aid to $69.4 million. Um, I want to say kudos to Pamela. Uh, we received word today from the New York State Division of Library Development that our construction projects that we submitted in September I believe September, um, we've passed everything that needs to happen, and now they're ready to go on to DASNY for their approval. So um, we're in good stead there. And again, thank you, Pamela, for all of your work in uh, her. Well, her head is covered, but um, thank you, Pamela, for all of your work. Uh, going as the conduit between the Division of Library Development and the libraries. 
Um, in order to receive public funds, public libraries, association libraries, libraries that are any, it doesn't matter what type of library, but public libraries in New York State must be registered. And um, it, I, I believe, to the best of my knowledge, I've been working with the Division of Library Development and with two of our public libraries that changed to become school district public libraries, their registration status should be approved soon. Um, later under new business, I just wanted to say that the town of Lake Pleasant became a federal depository library a few years ago. What they didn't realize or what wasn't realized that the library holdings would more than double by becoming a uh, federal depository library. So um, this caused a dramatic raise uh, to their monthly fees, their annual JA fees, uh, approximately $200 more per month. Mm -hmm. uh, that they, anyway, um, I'm gonna suggest let me just say this. For 2023, the fees would be approximately 4.8% of their budget. They have a budget of 113,000, give and take some dollars. Um, and for 2024, it would be a 5% increase. Um, <clears throat> so uh, later on, there is a, under new business, perhaps there's something that uh, Sal's could do to help alleviate this. I just want to also explain, um, even if every single one of the depository program e-holdings are withdrawn today, uh, unfortunately, the way the JA fees are figured, they would still have to pay this, that increased amount for the next two years because... Excuse me. Can you explain what that, that categorization means, the depository? Um, they're taking in um, federal documents. Is that something From that the they want, wanted to do? They had wanted to do it, oh, okay. uh, but they didn't realize. realize. Okay. Their board hasn't met to discuss it okay. Okay. Uh, yet. So I don't know what they're going to do. And Nancy isn't here uh, today, so she can't give us an update on that. So, so in 2022, their monthly JA fee was approximately $260 a month. For 2023, their monthly fee is $458.00. And for 2024, the monthly fee would be $494.55. That's a big hit for a... Uh, for a library. Now, here's the tricky part. If you're a depository for uh, federal, isn't there federal money that goes with that? No. <laughs> no. It's the it's the glory. What kind of documents does that mean? Um, everything that the government printing office. It's all e content. Oh, okay. So it's all e content, and it doubled their holdings. I'm just it, I'm curious that they even wanted that. Pay the truth. No, um, knowing the community. Um, so the way the JA fees are figured, the 2023 fees were determined in January 2022. The uh, JA Council reviewed and approved, and then it went to the SALS board, and it went to the MBLS board. And that's when the 2023 fees were approved in January of 2022, so a year ago. Um, and the 20, well, the 2024 fees will be determined today because you'll be voting on it. And that those fees are determined using data, that means holdings, and circulation from 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's so that's why it's really a two year gap, another one year gap. Yeah. Right. 
So again, this is why I'm asking the sales board to consider some things that we could talk about later on. <clears throat> and so if, as I said earlier, if all of those electronic documents are withdrawn today, the library wouldn't see a reduction until 2025. So what I will be suggesting is that SALS helps the library with the unbudgeted expense and considers um, a, a grant of $2,376 in 2023 and in 2024, um, a grant of $2,808. But it's only for those two years. Just out of curiosity, is any other library in cells a federal depository? So that's to our benefit. Are those grants cover what percentage or that would be that? that would be the increase. The increase. So what is it, about two hundred dollars? They their monthly fee was two hundred sixty dollars and twenty seven cents, and in twenty twenty three the monthly fee is four hundred fifty eight dollars. So it's about two hundred dollars more. And then in 2024, the fee will be almost $500. And then it snowballs as they add their, because the government is always doing things through the uh, government printing office. Go ahead, I have a question um, about government documents. It used to be when they were print, I know this because I worked in many repository libraries, it used to be when they were print, very few libraries get all the documents. You select what you want. But if they're only getting electronic, it's been a long time since I was at a depository. I'm just wondering if someone has asked them if they accepted all of it or could they hone in what they want, if it could help them in the future. I don't know if, because if this isn't sustainable for, the have, for them to have everything, but it's useful for the public, and maybe they're already doing that. Maybe they're only taking a sliver of it. Right, and they're not meeting until February to discuss it, but I wanted to be able to give them an option if the board so chooses to help with the cost of this project and not forever but at least for the for these two years and, and would these be um accessible to other sales libraries uh -huh. i mean it's, i'm kind of surprised that, I'm sure. that um crandall jack is doing there? something jack could you share some of the titles that are now available Jack. We can't hear you, Jack. He's searching. Yes, I can. I just have to search for him. Caught me off guard there. So okay. <laughs> you give me a minute. That's a good question because Crandall's like the biggest one, right? Um, very few libraries choose to be depository libraries. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It, it, Sarah, it will be interesting to see how much circ circulation of that. Where we are is. trying to find that. I'm guessing it's not very so high. Sarah, if it's also. electronic, if there were not hard copies, true. why do these have to be anywhere? Why can't they all just be in Washington and you, you know, uh, make a request to Washington to get them? I don't see Jill on the call. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I, was, I was looking. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll save Jack. <laughs> um, so each month I get a load of records for these federal depository items, most of which are electronic. They do have um, they do have probably around twenty or thirty physical items that they've received and they house in the library. All of this is available to everybody. Um, the electronic records basically just link out to the federal depository and you can view the documents there. Um, part of the stipulation was that we had to catalog these items um, in order for them to be part of this <laughs> program. So, um, and I don't know where Lake Pleasant is at with this. Maybe they've asked the question, do we have to take the electronic items? Can we just catalog the physical stuff? Um, so that is to be 
to be determined um, based on their discussions with the federal depository. But some of the uh, some of the documents, I guess Jack's showing some of them. We've got. Is this showing the documents that Lake Pleasant pulled up? These are in the catalog. They're in yeah, the so catalog. These are the, yeah, so these are some of the documents that are in their catalog or in our catalog, the shared catalog. Does that mean that somebody looked at them in Lake Pleasant? No. So that's just, yeah. 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 It's done, I guess you get the records, Jill, and then you, you get them into the catalog? Yep, I just load them into the catalog and them. No. no. Oh, it's automatic. Because they it's automatic because okay. they've chosen to be a yeah. So this is the federal depository the library program. Okay. And this is there. This is accessible. Just a question, Sarah. This is accessible once it once established to the the network, to the to the, the region. Um, is it possible we could uh, justify our subsidy if there was some cooperation with, say, Crandall, for instance, uh, so that so that in terms of cataloging, in terms of making it available to the member libraries and what, and it, and it might make more. It, but it's not Crandall. It's it's an agreement between the the Lake Pleasant Library and the federal right. government, and they're available to everyone. Because they're in the catalog, right? And 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 so in in effect, it, they're the they're the host, but we are becoming the uh, we are becoming the conduit for the other member libraries. So I'm just saying that might be a justification for for doing this, rather than just simply a subsidy to another library, but rather a you know that we're setting this up, and then perhaps we could uh, ensure that it's it's available for the other libraries as well. Just a thought. So ask them to continue doing it and either through central library money or through Sal's budget, make up the difference. Or why not simply make an exclusion from Sal's that, that we're not counting this as the holdings? Is that is the well, we can't really do anything about it until we start negotiating the 2025. Um, which will be this time next year, JA fees. We do retroactive stuff with the budgets. It's a little bit more complicated with the JA budget because libraries, it affects every single library in SALS and MVLS. It's not just one library mm -hmm. when it comes to yeah. the okay. amount of money we collect to help with the JA fees. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just an interesting timing <laughs> issue. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up to you. Um, to, and we do have some time too. Um, and then government produces lots of records. So they're at, what is it, 29,000 now? Records, Jill? No, I don't have that. Here? I don't have that added up anywhere. Um, but yes, it would be several, several thousand. This is Michelle. Records. I think it was like fourteen thousand records that increased between the the data for the two years. I, I believe it was about fourteen thousand. I don't know how many has been have been. Well, yes, for the twenty twenty two, it it came up to fourteen thousand more. Around so, there. You can see that it'll be continuously growing. But that's a discussion that that library needs to have. And it's nice to be able to tell them, depending upon how you're voting later, what SALS can do to help with this situation. And that's the end of my oral report. It's probably more than you wanted to know about the federal <laughs> depository libraries. Um, any questions for me? Michelle, you're on. Uh, Sarah asked me to talk about a couple of the projects that JA is working on. Um, one of them is fishing training. So JA has contracted with a company called Know Before. 
Um, where we'll be setting up phishing training and security awareness training that will be required by all um, st library staff with email and Polaris access. The training will happen periodically throughout the year, and we hope that this will help all of our users become more savvy in recognizing and avoiding phishing and hacking attempts. Um, phishing is one of the leading causes of uh, ransomware attacks and identity theft, and we're hoping to start the training very, very soon. Uh, I don't know if everybody has any questions about what phishing is. It's uh, basically if you receive an email or sometimes a text message, it appears to be completely legitimate, but the sender is trying to get you to click on a link or reply to that message and provide personal information, credit cards, usernames, passwords, that kind of thing. Um, another project we're working on is, I'm sorry? No, does that mean I haven't received a $5,000 reward from Walmart? <laughs> exactly. Yes. If it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. It's a pretty good basis to start with. The other project we're working on, or and a, one other project, is that we've been working with Upstate Agency Insurance in Glens Falls to try to get uh, to apply for cyber liability insurance for SALS and for JA. Um, after discussing the services that JA provides and the relationship between the system, the libraries, and JA, they are recommending a policy that includes errors and emissions coverage. Um, we're working through the application and we're hoping to get quotes uh, very soon. Um, so this is a big project we're working on to get coverage for sales and JA as part of that. Um, and let's see, so we're filling out, one of the other things we're finding as we're filling out these applications, some of the things you can do to lower the cost and the risk is phishing training. So that's a big uh, reason why we're doing that. Also multi-factor authentication. And we um, have turned it on for a couple of our libraries, but that's another thing that's a very good way to um, prevent fraud and, and some of these risks. And we also um, have been answering questions for a lot of member libraries as they're filling out their own applications and like answering some of the technical things for them. Are the, are the libraries required to have the cyber insurance? We're highly recommending them okay. to have it because SALS can't do an umbrella for all of the libraries. They have to do it individually. And we are recommending that every library um, explore and purchase it because there are things that happen locally. Yeah, so, uh, you know, within your local, any of the local libraries, they have records that have nothing to do with the automation system that need to be protected. And depending on how a breach were to happen, we hope we don't have any, but if a breach were to happen due to something that happened physically in the library um, to gain access, then that would not be covered by the insurance that SALS would have. Thanks, Michelle. Makes a good case at, at the local level for uh, uh, educating um, library staff that that uh, while they're working, that, you know, their personal computers and personal phones and everything should be separate from the library system, or they shouldn't be using the library system to you know to go online recreationally, because then that that's a way to a possible way to get into the individual library system. I'm just thinking out loud here. I know in our library, there's a lot of people that don't have good internet conductivity at their homes. So they actually come into the library and do all sorts of personal stuff, including, you know, financial stuff. Um, and I'm sure that there's sort of an expectation that there's some kind of security on if the they're using, if they're using the workstations, jump in anytime, Michelle. If they're mm -hmm. using the workstations, um, they are pretty safe. Um, they've got all sorts of malware and things. And okay. then once you're finished working, everything gets erased. Right. Okay. Um, so the public is safe that way. The other thing, though, is if they're using the Wi-Fi. It's not as secure, correct? 
That's correct. It is not a secure. Our, the Wi-Fi with the SALS libraries is Meraki, and it's got some very good security features. Nothing is 100%. Um, and we've always said that, and, and you'll read, you see it all the time. If you're using public Wi-Fi, do not, you know, use a VPN, do not do, tran, you know, tran, financial transactions. Be very careful what you do, because there is no 100%. We do everything we can to make it as safe as we can. And what we're concerned about are the uh, are the staff computers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are there any? Um, so, if a library has a relationship with the, you know, we do with the firm firm that does our payroll and our bookkeeping, what kinds of um, requirements have any of the SALs or any of their member libraries done to ensure? the security on that end. Bob, you want to touch that? As, as far as with our, like with paychecks that does our, our payroll. Right, and for an individual library, you know, there's a bookkeeping company, you know, a couple blocks away and that's who we do business with. Um, how do we? Well, do you upload the data from the- computers? I don't, I actually don't know how Tim manages that, but presumably he may. And I would assume that he doesn't use the public Wi-Fi to do that. He uses the secure system to do it. I mean, I don't know what he does. But. And that would be then the responsibility of the vendor to have the insurance too. At that mm -hmm, point, mm -hmm. you're going to the vendor. And do do most libraries have some kind of an agreement with their financial partners about their cybersecurity? I mean, this actually seems to me like a maybe a bigger um, risk. You know, Bob, I mean, we, we know because we know our banks are using multi-factor authentication, Plus, Ajax. Well, with, with so. the banks and any financial institutions, I have to even do it because I have, for, for my private consulting that I do, um, I have to pass a questionnaire and a test through the State Department of Financial Services every year to be sure that I can use my computer into the system to get into the financial networks. And if I don't pass it, then I can't. And who is uh, who manages that test? I mean, state. It's the State Department of Financial Services. The, depending upon the amount of volume that you do, the number of employees that you have, and then the dollars that you handle, there's different levels of security that. I have to have, or any financial person has to have. Um, and and it, it, the higher the dollars are, the higher the number of employees, the more criteria there is that you have to meet. And I don't, I don't know if Michelle has run into any of, of this when she's been looking. Um, we have done some, you know, helping with the libraries who accept credit cards, who have to pass PCI compliant payment payment card industry um, standards. I'm not sure if that's the same kind of stuff that you would have to do in your business or not. Um, anything that any library is doing with any sort of financial banking or any of that, I mean, they have to make sure you're using, you know, sec secure computers, there's gotta be encryption in place. But as Bob said, your vendor that you're dealing with for payroll or, or your banking and all that, they'd be the ones that you would inquire about and make sure you're doing things securely and that they're secure. Um, this is a reason why libraries need their own local cyber insurance because those kinds of things aren't related to JA and SALS, but they're right related to running your library. And I know my errors and omissions insurance I have to carry, and it includes cyber insurance in it. Used to only run less than a thousand dollars a year. Now it's seven thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. It's just the yeah. cost of doing business. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Any other questions from Michelle or me or Colleen? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Um, thank you, Colleen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, moving on to uh, committee reports. Uh, audit and finance. Nothing that I know of. No report. <laughs> okay. Uh, press building. Not that I know. <laughs> okay, bylaws, Jordan. 
Uh, nothing right now. Margaret Central Library Agent Services. No report. Okay, and any of you uh, county aid coordinators, anything to report? No. I think that we 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 made it into the budget this year. We we're getting Hamilton County, right? Um, Warren County and Saratoga County aid. <laughs> And thank you, coordinators, for and thank you, Sarah, for seeing that through. Okay. Um, let's see. Library services, nothing to report. Yeah. Here we go. Do you have a report? Yeah. Okay. And Janet again, personnel. So we have a couple of things, but they're under new business. So shall we wait for that? Yes, we can yeah. do that. And trustee nominating of and that's under new business as well. Yes, Jordan. Thank you, by the way, for your work on that. All right. Uh, is there any unfinished business? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to new business. Uh, first item on the agenda is to reappoint Timothy McDonough, who is from your library in uh, in Waterford to the JA Council. He served on this before. Um, Chris, you want to move that? Oh, sure. I'll make a motion. Okay. Is, is there a second? Second by Margaret. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The motion carries. Okay, and then we have a motion to um, approve Nancy Vineyard as a member of the uh, South Board. Jordan, you want to speak to that? Um, I could read her um, this letter she submitted on that. Uh, sure, absolutely. If you'd like, um, this is from Nancy Vineyard. Regarding the current opening for a third member from Hamilton County to fill an open position on the board of the Southern Adirondack Library System, I would like to submit my information for consideration. I have been a resident of Indian Lake since 1999. I use the Stellar Indian Lake Branch and Sal system on a weekly basis for over these two decades. I love our library and our overall lending system, and we consider it my honor to be able to give back by serving on its board. My local employment background consists of having been a newspaper reporter for the Hamilton County News and several other local papers covering mostly environmental issues and Adirondack page of park <laughs> agency meetings, as well as writing articles for the Adirondack Explorer and other national magazines. I also taught English at Adirondack Community College for six years during the 2000s, and while there, are, and while there also tutored in the writing center and taught specialty classes in the continuing education department. I've also managed two area gift shops, including forging numerous relationships with local artisans whose work I stopped. During my 20 plus years in the Adirondacks, I continuously su supplemented my income by operating a store selling rare and antiquarian books online. I am a member of Adirondack Lake Center for the Arts, Protect the Adirondacks and the Adirondack Land Trust. Please feel free to contact me with any questions for further information. Okay, are there your uh... Do you like to offer that as a motion? I, I do. Okay, is there a second? Okay, seconded by uh, Barbara. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, when does this begin, Sarah? Um, I guess now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's replacing Nancy. Who yes. had conflicts and not able to get here? So she'll be joining us in February then. Okay. Can you scoop her up on your way down? We That's the plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item on the new business is uh, uh, the 2024 JAP. 
Who would like to speak to that? You received a packet. Um, you mean speak to it or just make a motion? Is that your baby? Sure. No, sure. it's Michelle. Michelle? Yeah. Michelle's still with us? Let's see her. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we every, know, we, every year we know how much we, we need to keep the JA going. Correct. And um, we, the Eric and Michelle and I, look at the different numbers and we use some things to help determine the fees, which has to do with the number of items and the number of CERCs by the end of a fiscal year. So part of our agreement with our member libraries is that we try to do this as far enough in advance so that they're able to do their budgeting. So what we're asking for is to approve the fee structure. If you see it as the 2024 fees, the monthly fee for all of the SALS libraries and all of the MVLS libraries. Um, this went it began with a um, discussion at the JA Audit and Finance Committee in December. I think it's a three percent increase, if right. I remember correctly. Right. We didn't we didn't increase the increase. It's the same as in previous years. And what the JA met last week and approved it, but what it needs is the approval from the two system boards. Sarah, I, I, I think I'm sh I think I'm sharing it. Is it up there? Yes. Yes, you are. Barbara, you asked, and it's and it's it's based, and of course it can vary from year to year and vary with the size of the library. It's based on both holdings and circulation. Mm -hmm. And what is needed was seven hundred and eight thousand six hundred fifty dollars and thirty cents, and this was a way based on those holdings in the different libraries. Um, on the other side of your page, you have the MBLS libraries. Any questions? Okay, any other uh, questions or comments? This is the usual usual annual practice and uh, having sat in on a few of these. And it, it also is not terribly different from discussions that we've had in the past. Uh, you know, depending on the year and depending on the, there's always a, there's always a question that the larger libraries have certain concerns, the smaller libraries have certain concerns. This is a compromise and it seems to have worked pretty well in the, in the past. And unless we have some major change in the landscape. Uh, this is pretty much the way that it's gone. We did have, was it, with, with, there was one year where, where uh, during the pandemic that we uh, did not have an increase, is that correct? Well, last year we had a decrease mm -hmm. because we changed how we did our uh, telecommunication. Right, right. Okay, any further comments or questions about the process? Okay, let's move to a vote then. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Who, who made the motion and who seconded? We didn't. We, we didn't. didn't. That's kind of well, that would be good. All right. I'm going to make the motion. Jordan moves it. I'll second. Seconded by Margaret. Okay. And once again, <laughs> all in favor? Any opposed? The abstentions. Okay, the motion now the motion carries. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be correct. All right, uh, Janet, would you uh, lead us through the next two items, please? Okay, well, these are part of the succession plan when we started talking about what we would need um, to create a succession plan. Um, we needed an updated job description for the director and the um, assistant director who would step in if the director left in the succession plan. So these drafts that you have here in your packet are 
updated um, as of December. So we're presenting them to be approved. So we do it one at a time, yeah. Okay, first the director. Okay, and this is coming from the committee? There's no committee. There is no committee. Yeah. Oh, well, 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 personnel. Well, well, personnel, personnel, personnel. personnel. Meet. They didn't meet. Okay, you haven't met. Okay, yeah. so then we'll need a second thing. I have a question. Oh, well, oh, well, let's let's get the second oh, first. Okay. Somebody second it, seconded by Elaine. All right now, go ahead. Your question. So this is that doesn't mean that this might not be revised as we go through the process of looking at the succession plan, right? This is just this is sort of today. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. It's just the clarification. We done the succession right. plan. Right. Just the clarification. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Did you make it executive director? Mm -hmm. I want new cards. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what to are me. You now? I'm a director. Just yeah. cross it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, seriously, is that, I mean, that's something we can consider. Right. Yes. What is the title? Right. Yeah. Right. Good, uh, yeah. good suggestion. Something to be referred back to the committee. When we have one. Okay, as far as the uh, then as far as the overall uh, concept, we've uh, been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. And now, and at the same time, assistant director, yeah. which is fifty percent of what we So, I move that we approve it. It's a draft again. Okay, so second, seconded by Carol. Discussion. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Now we go on to the session planning committee. Maybe that should have been first, but never mind. <laughs> so actually this came out of a discussion that Barbara brought up that we didn't have a succession plan and we have a we need to approve this ad hoc committee. We tried to have the different counties represented. And so um, it would be Carol, Barbara, me, Margaret, and you're the me, you're yeah. on it. Yeah. And so I guess we need approval to create this committee so we can go ahead with our work. Correct. And this is being ad hoc. This is as necessary, necessary. and for as long as necessary. It's not being added as a permanent part of the committee structure, similar to what we, many libraries had to do with safety committees for the pandemic to meet, meet a particular need. Okay. And um, I don't believe we met on this one either. So is there a second for this? Thank you. Laura seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Okay, the next item is uh, uh, conference attendance. Could you uh, explain that a little bit? Um, the American Library Association has a, robu a robust um, effort to work with people on the Hill in DC to uh, do legislation that would be beneficial to libraries as well as federal funding towards libraries. And I was invited to attend an ALA fly-in. So it's <laughs> not everybody from all over the country, but people in certain parts of the certain states um, have been asked to come in to do an advocacy event March 8th through 9th in Washington, D.C. And because I was invited to do so, ALA will pick up the cost of light, um, the hotel, food. I like, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Including when you so you're asking you're you're asking basically for the uh, approval to attend. Right. Okay. You want to move that, Margaret? Sure. Okay. Is there a second? Seconded by Christine. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should drive. <laughs> is, this, is this also a, a, a sort of a mirror of what we do here at the state level? Will you be talking to representatives too? Right. Um, perhaps the lease. Um, maybe enjoy a police the police. Luck, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, and um, uh, certainly, certainly, uh, yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, it, it may be AIDS. Um, but I did get the last time I did this, I did see Elise and I did see Paul. Um, maybe you'll see George Dantos, he was a librarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many, many, many other things. <laughs> and I think part of my message is how important it is to have federal funds for our rural libraries. So I bring the rural library voice to the discussion. Okay. All right. Now uh, we have a uh, uh, proposal. Um, Again, would That's you like me. to speak to that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you all got this beautiful um, <laughs> chart created by Pamela. Oh, it's very good. nice, and it helps helps you understand anyway. Help me understand what was going on here. Mm -hmm. So currently, there there were five seats that were going to end in 2025 on this board all at once, and fortunately, Barbara and Margaret agreed to stay on for a second term. But when 2030 rolls around, the board could potentially have to find five new members all at once. And you right. know how easy that would be. So it was suggested that we vote to adjust the end dates on, um, on Jordan's and on Barbara's. So Jordan has agreed to end his current term in 2024. And Barbara Taylor has agreed to extend her current term to end in 2026. So we won't have everybody at the same time. So that's what we need to approve if you want to approve it. <laughs> okay, going back to the, we looked at the, um, we looked at the, uh, the bylaws and while it doesn't specifically uh, address this particular situation, it does give the board liberty in, in, in certain situations to, and in this case, what we're attempting to do is ensure representation by each of the counties. And also ensure the orderly transition from, you know, from one year to the other. And it's it's an adjustment, but it's really not changing anything fundamentally, particularly since we have the agreement of, of some of the members to do this. So I just thought I'd add that. Uh, um, it, it, it's it's not an emergency, but it is a pressing situation where it's just a, attempting to adjust for. for and that. it was recommended by the Division of Library Development. Yeah. It's Okay, any questions about this? All right, yeah, just hang on to your chart. So if nothing else, you remember when your own term expires. <laughs> Sometimes we forget one year blends into another. But all right, uh, you are you are you going to offer that as a? Uh, as, I will. I'll, 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 okay, I'll, is there a second for this? Seconded by Elaine. Okay, any further discussion? Questions? Okay, all those in favor. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. All right, now we come back to uh, Sarah. We come back to the discussion on the uh, JAPs for Lake Pleasant Library. Right. I'm not, I'm asking that um, the board allow us to share um, the chart, uh, not share the chart, but share. The cost should uh, the Lake Pleasant Board ask us to do it? It's not working. Go ahead. I'll make the motion. Is that what we're doing? Making the motion first and then we'll discuss it. We sure. It. Okay. Move by Elaine. So, is there a second? Seconded by Barbara. But we are going to limit it to the two years, correct? We're going to say for the for the next two years for which they are already obligated. My, oh, I hesitate to speak because I'm the chair, but my only concern is just the optics of the situation. We just had the discussion about how nobody's 
ever totally satisfied with the JA formula, but we all are living with it. And um, if we can somehow tie this whole search, discussion, negotiations, whatever, um, the the, the, uh, the impulse is is I think it is is uh, is noble. Um, if we can just tie it to the the benefit that the whole network would have, the whole the whole uh, uh, association would have, um, somehow that that would be helpful for twenty twenty six. No, for forever. Well, in other words, they, they, they're, 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 yeah, they're 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 yeah they're 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 the depository. But if we all can benefit from it, that might give justification as to why we would support it financially. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, rather than simply providing aid to an individual library, but rather that it's we're doing it because it it benefits the entire system. Wouldn't that be something that should be taken to the entire system to be considered? Yes, by the other libraries. It could be. It well, could be part, I, it could be part of the your, the deliberations. I, right I think. I think it should be. Yeah, to see this if whole it's question, something yeah. that yeah. all libraries want. Well, I mean, to look for I think a, a long, long range solution because this is a two year solution. Right. right. We don't know what the solution. We don't want to put ourselves in a position where. Right. So every year we give more and more and more to try to keep that going. Right. That isn't something that people that everybody use. wants. That's right. That's what I well, think. and they may have other sources to pay for it, either through their friends or some benefactor from. Or is that not possible? It's possible. Yeah, they're just starting the discussion now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and this will just be an option that they could. They haven't use. asked. Yeah. They haven't officially right. asked. Right. That. But I wanted to be able to. I can't offer anything like that without your mm -hmm. approval because it's the sales budget and it's it wasn't included in our development of our budget. But in a sense, it's like a pilot to see what's going to happen with this for two years. Yeah. Because I mean, did they did they really understand what they were getting into and will they want to continue? I wish Nancy was here to I be able to answer the questions. questions. But I'll keep you informed with emails as as they progress. Do you know yeah. uh, are other Wait. library systems have federal depository libraries within their systems in New York State? I would imagine so. Big state like this, probably not everyone, but some Jill, of can you do a Google search to see if any other New York State library? Is a government depository library? Um, yeah, I'll I'll see what I can find out here in the next couple minutes. We'll stall. <laughs> so here's another question while we're waiting. Were we not to have a depository library, does that mean that no one in this four county area would have access to these federal? It just wouldn't be as easy. Yeah, you can still do it individually and request it and pay for pay for whatever they want it. You can so, always go to the New York State Library, right. which is a full depository. Right. Full state That's right. I mean, so you have to state, go to the state library, but their electronic stuff is in their catalog. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering really what the benefit is of having a depository library. Mm -hmm. If the New York City Public Library is a depository, we all have access to that. That's right. Again, I think these are all things that can be part of the discussion. So rather than we're stalling, rather than yeah. making a commit, <laughs> rather than making a commitment, we can say that we are interested and we want to help them and we want to discuss it further. Yeah. And then hey, Russ. Yes. To your point of this being a benefit for the whole system. Um, there is, you know, we could advertise this system wide that they, that, you know, your patrons have access to this uh, depository. Um, because even during this meeting, I had a library reach out, finding out about this and wanted to know how can we advertise this to our patrons. Um, so. Well, that's, that's what I'm thinking. And then it, again, it provides justification for us doing it as a system rather than doing it just to an individual library that needs help. I mean, we do that with our construction grants, but we do it system-wide. And I'm just wor worried about the precedent of, of uh, 
you know, singling out a singling out a library because it, at, at certain years every library has a situation that they get into. So, but then would the system be the contractor with the government rather than the individual library? Uh, well, well, that's one alternative. Again, another alternative might be just to have some kind of a relationship either with South or with with Trample as the central library. And, and as Jack suggested, just to make it known that here's a resource that exists within the with, within the system. Can I just say one thing about sure. the Crandall Library? It's a finite amount of money that they have. And the services that the Crandall Library provides as a central library is agreed upon by all of the member libraries. Right. And as I think you said, you said that maybe the member libraries might not want this with their access. So I just wanted to throw that no, out. No, no, no. We just need more information. Jill, do you have an answer? Yep. yep, I do. So there are 66 federal depository libraries in the state. Um, sort of locally, there's Troy Public, um, Union College, Albany Law School, um, SUNY Albany. And um, a lot of the major universities, Cornell, um, and downstate, you know, the, the New York, uh, the New York Public Library, also the, the New York State Library. Um, so there's, like I said, 66. So they're kind of spread throughout the state. A lot of the universities um, are participants. So there is access to the so content. And is it a redundancy to have it in the in the online record? I mean, in, in the system, it's an, it's another question. Well, it's redundant. Yeah, really. If it is available at the state library and it's available at the New York Public Library, that means anybody in New York State would have access. I think Especially anybody sitting science. at this table understands that, but your basic user isn't quite that sophisticated always, and if they can get it through their own catalog. They're more apt to than to even know to search SUNY or the state library or something else. But is there a way on your on your interface on your on your computers to have have a a bookmark so that people can do that without Jack? Yeah, certainly the cells catalog is on our yes. library. System. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. if they wanted to link to it on put something on your website, I'd be happy to help any library. And I, I think if they're gonna. I kind of wanted to wait to see what Lake Pleasant, if they're going to continue the service, but I would be happy to help them advertise it and come up with something so that other member libraries are aware of the information that's available to them. And, and so you can pass that along to your patrons. I think I think as a board, we'd be comfortable, Sarah, Jack, Jill, um, looking into this further and then just bring, bring it back for a progress report as to how it goes the next couple of months. And it's also up to the Lake Pleasant Board of Trustees whether Correct. they want to continue. Right. right. Making it more public to the system though would also give us a sense of how much it may be used in yes. the next two years where it's a necessity that it continues, right? With yeah. the contract. Thank you. That was a robust conversation. <laughs> yeah, we all. We all. A lot of questions. So was this approved? Yeah. Yes. I think we've already, are we still discussing it? No, no, the motion is approved. Oh, it was? The motion yes, is approved for you to, okay. for you to do it as long as we have report back. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's talk about tangents and rabbit holes. I know, that was a big one. <laughs> Okay, is there a director's council report today? No. Nope. Okay, any further comments, announcements? I have, one, I have a comment. Go ahead, um, I was wondering, Sarah, if we did any research on um, the portable app um, for documents and for your board members, or Elaine had another one. Um, yes. Um, board docs. Yes, okay. board docs was another one yeah. that um, coordinates all the paperwork um, in, a, in a in a site where you can um, communicate with each other, and, uh, and and it's easy to be able to bring up the documents on your um, device at a meeting. 
The answer is no. Okay. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. Could. But as a trustee of the Albany Public Library, we use board docs okay. and it's not intuitive. We use Boardable and Board Randall, and um, I don't have any problems with it so far. Okay. Boardable. Boardable. Thank you. Brief <laughs> announcement. You have travel reimbursement forms in your folder. There is now a place at the top to write your name because it used to just have a signature at the bottom, and I don't know all your signatures. <laughs> uh, I was able to figure some of them out. So if you would just write your name at the top of the form, and then every time you come, write down your mileage, and then reimburse it at the end of the year. How about print their name? <laughs> yeah, even better. Print right there. In that little, well, it doesn't matter. Anywhere on the top, but there was a gray box that says name now. And if you print that and then sign on the bottom, we will reimburse you. Thank you. <laughs> no idea. So, I know, I've always guessed. I have a question. It's not actually a South question, but we are getting ready to look look at the Waterford budget for um, 2024. And I'm wondering, in light of the recent inflation, are other libraries giving larger salary increases going forward? Oh. You know, we've been doing like 3% most years. And um, for the one other, I thought the board's been struggling with this. We we discussed it, and uh, I can't remember whether it was three or three and a half, but it felt similar to, you know, to some prior years. And uh, of course, at the same time, we've been doing a, taking about five years, we've been both increasing the, which is mostly pages, the initial start, it took five years to get to $15. And at the same time, we've also been doing a comparison with other libraries like Crandall, Saratoga, uh, though, because we're a medium to large size library for the system in each of the salary categories. And where some did not need to be adjusted, but others were, were low. And so we've included that in our budget. So we've, in addition to the the cost of the COLA, the cost of living increase each year. We've been doing those two things as well. And so I would say we didn't make a major difference this year, even though simply because we also look at being in the capital district. We look we look at what the, the state is doing. We look at what other people are doing in terms of increases. And everybody's different, but in our case, we're a public library. So the Again, the optics of the situation is we 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 know our staff is good. We want to uh, reward them. On the other hand, we also have to have an annual budget vote every year. So uh, it's that balance. I'm sure you know about that. I'm not telling you anything new that you don't you don't know. But so there was no, there wasn't a major difference simply because of inflation. Because I think every institution is going through that right now. Are, are sales members libraries um, salary information collected by sales? It's not necessarily collected <clears throat> by sales, but in the annual report, if I remember correctly, the director's salary is listed and maybe an entry level uh, librarian. Also, um, see through New York. I might be getting the site wrong. Maybe one of my yeah, colleagues New York yeah. has. My library's whole staff was on there when I was a director. So I don't think it goes to page level and it sometimes can be delayed, but you can look up any public employee salary. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So move to the reception. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Good meeting. <laughs>